to thank you guys that are attending this class. Uh, and before I get started, I do want to show you this. This is um, this is a free code for a first month of artwork on us for you guys taking time to come and hang out with us. Uh, this particular class is going to deal with screen printing and how our artwork, uh, the Great Dan Graphics artwork, is ready-made and uh, for you to save some money uh, in creating your production-ready art files. So this is, if you write this code down, go to the website after this class, you'll be able to uh, log in and get that month on me. It does expire on uh, 11 4 uh, as indicated there. So I will show this code again at the end of the class, but um, just wanted to make sure we threw it up here in the beginning. So let's go ahead and get this guy started here. All right, so what I want to show you is a little bit of, uh, first off, who I am. I am Dan Clement, president of Great Dan Graphics, by the way. And um, what I've done over the years is we create artwork for our apparel decorating industry. And we're going to focus today on screen printing. But before we get to the, the actual nuts and bolts of the art process, I want to show you our website and what, we, what it is that we do. So if you take a look, here's our website. And um, I'm already logged in. If you notice, I have 112 downloads remaining this month and 198 uh, embroidery uh, files. So stock art is 112. Your, uh, and my embroidery is 198. So if you're a customer or a subscriber, um, that would be your countdown uh, monthly, and that would renew each month uh, 200 apiece. So if you get, if you sign up for the stock art, you'll get 200 downloads for $18.99 a month. Uh, and if you sign up for the embroidery, that's only $14.99 a month, or you get both of them for $31.99. Uh, and each uh, of those comes with 200 downloads per month. You know, to just to explain why. It's at 200 because that is an extremely high number, and most people that do subscription services do not do it that high. Um, but I wanted to do that because I want this you guys to think of this business and what we do as an art department arm of your own art department. So, if basically it's cheap enough, so cheap in fact that it's you know less than lunch uh, on any day of the week. Uh, type of thing, and it's going to give you a full month worth of artwork. So if you need a simple black line, just go get it. If you need a cut file, go get that. Screen printing, digital file, whatever it is that you need, don't even hesitate, don't even think, just because you'll always have artwork available to you when it's that high of a number. So just to um, show you the website, here's our main site. We can search anything that we're looking for here. So if you had a category, baseball, football, whatever it is that you're looking for, um, you can type it in there. Uh, I want to show you the home page, though, because every single week, this first row of images changes. We add new content every single week, and uh, as far as I know, no one else does that. We also supply the embroidery digitized version of those files each week. right? So let me do this. I'm just going to click on this uh, particular image here, <clears throat> and let's take a look at what we have. So this is displaying our digital printing file. So if we are a direct-to-garment uh, garment, uh, printer or a, or a banner printer, large format, full color printer, if you die sublimation, any of that sort of thing, we supply a high-res PNG file uh, for you, and it would look like this. So the next one here is a print cut file. So if you have a Roland Versicam or a Mamaki printer cutter, what we do, if you can see here in this image, is we add a bleed to the artwork. So we pull out the outside pixels, add a bleed to that artwork, and then assign a cut line to it already. And the reason we do that is because our biggest complaint from our customers has been, um, well, not really our customers, but that I hear from customers and people at trade shows is, I don't like the sticker look. Because most people will come around the artwork with a cut contour line, and then when they print it on that Roland Versicam or Mamaki printer and cutter situation, you would have a white outline, and everything looks like a sticker. So what we've done is we did it this way to eliminate that effect. All right, so we have a screen printing color file, and we're going to use this one here today. Well, not this particular image, but this particular this type this file right here. Uh, we have an inkjet laser printer, so we have a Oki Data laser printer with a white toner and that sort of thing. This is the file you would use for that. This here says a screen printing black line. And what that is, that is our vector line drawing, right? That's our clip art piece that everybody else has. All my competitors, everybody out there has a vector line clip art uh, drawing. Uh, we have that too. It's just one of seven different production files. So if you have a vinyl cutter, we have a simplified version. Now, we have a lot of people that use this for screen printing as well just because it's a simplified, more graphic-looking uh, image, uh, and it screen prints just as easy as the, as the other one. And what we do is we give you that as a detailed, if you see the image there, and then when I, look, when I click on this um, 
vinyl cutting basic file, you can see we've simplified it even further. And then the reason for that is this particular one, vinyl cutting detailed, is designed for a full front or a, or a bag or so, 10 inches or so, right? It's a, it's a full image. And um, this particular one has been modified to work as a three inch left chest or a hat, uh, that sort of thing. So, so knowing that, what I'm going to do is the image that we're going to use today, I'm going to go ahead and find it here. So I'm going to type in, uh, we're going to use a fire football. And if you've seen any of my other webinars in this series for all these other production decorating techniques, uh, what we've done is we use the same image. And I want to do that again today just to show you that how to work with all the different file formats that we have. So I'm going to scroll down to the find the one I want, and this this happens to be it. So we're going to click on that, and for some reason my internet in here is extremely slow today. So there we go. So again, here's our image, and here's the same individual seven production files that we're looking for. So if I click on this screen printing black line, and I'm already logged in, so once you log in, you can click this download button, and it's going to go ahead and charge you one download per image. I'm going to go ahead and hit the download button there and here we go I'm going to save my files if you notice it comes in as a screen print line that's the name of the file here that we saw dot zip so once we download this file in order to use it we'll have to unzip it if you're on a Mac and you're using Safari Safari will automatically unzip your artwork or your files for you and just show you a folder in your downloads folder all the other browsers and even on a PC side it's going to download it as a zip and the reason we do that is we zip these files automatically so they stay safe and contained in the transition from the server to your computer because if we leave it open and just send the file we risk uh, the opportunity of having of losing bits and pieces and you're getting a corrupt file on, on the, uh, the other side so so I'm going to do this I'll hit OK and it's going to download that file um, I'm going to come up here to screen printing color because that's my full color image that I want to work if I click on this details button by the way we can take a look uh, of what we're going to get here. So this thing says screen printing color. We got a DCS 2.0 EPS file. Um, now what that is, that's just a fancy EPS file that has our alpha channels built inside of it. So we're going to take that file and bring it into Illustrator or Corel Draw, whatever drawing program you use. It'll work in both of them uh, without a problem. And you notice the next thing here says printing spec sheet is included with the download. I'm going to show you what that means and what that is. Um, it is a raster image. This particular image is not a vector file. The black line clip art piece, that's a vector file. Uh, and and these, this image is separated in simulated process color separation technique. And all that is is a, um, to get a real color, full color look. We don't print CMYK here because it's too inconsistent and um, it's not guaranteed that you will get a successful print. So these things here are spot color separations using spot colors and uh, it's much easier to print this particular image than four color process. So if you notice the uh, colors here on a white shirt it's five colors, on a black shirt it's five colors. But on a colored shirt if we're going to put this on a green or a gray or something like that it will be a six color print. Everything we create is six colors or less. So I'm going to go ahead and just X out of this. I just wanted to show you that. So we'll go ahead and download this one. It's going to charge me one download again. I'm going to go ahead and save my file. And it's going to automatically go, since I didn't change anything, right? It's going to automatically go to my downloads folder, which if you look in my uh, file here, this here it is. So here's one, and it's a zipped file. That's what they look like. Um, and in, on a PC, it'll look like a little folder with a zipper thing as well. So the way you unzip, if I were to try to bring this in the Illustrator or Corel Draw, it will not work. It does not recognize a zip file. So on a Mac, all you do is double click and you get the folder next to it. Double click this one. Now they're both unzipped. Now I can throw these away because we've already taken the files out. If you're on a PC, you just right click on that zip file and go to Extract All and it will do the same thing. Put everything in a folder for you. So if I open up this particular image, I can take a look. There's my black line illustrator file. That's my vector clip art piece, right? And if I double click this, it has an EPS and a print spec sheet. So the EPS, if you notice, look how big they are. They're, they're pretty large files. Uh, but that is our separation file. Again, it's a full color preview that allows us to easily pull our separations from in Illustrator or Corel Draw. So what I want to do now is I want to show you this print spec sheet. So every image that we create, we create a spec sheet that go along with that goes along with it. 
And what that means is if you follow the recipe and the information in, included inside this uh, spec sheet, you're going to have a successful print. So for instance, we're going to print our white base first if it's on a dark shirt. Uh, and we're going to flash that. That's the second color here. It's not a, technically a color. It's just a station. We're going to print our base and we're going to flash just the white. And all these other colors are printed wet on wet. And if I use these mesh counts, right, so my white base is on a 156, all my colors are on 230s. My highlight white is considered just another color at this point, so it's on a 230 as well. My screen angle is 61 degrees, and my line screen on my halftone size is 45 lines per inch. Um, those are big enough dots to hold fairly easily on a screen and um, easy to wash out and that sort of thing and, and, and contain it. So if I print white base, I flash it. Then I'll print my black next, and I leave everything, no more flashing. I print my red, my orange, my yellow, and my highlight white. The reason these are printed wet on wet is because of the technique that we use, the simulated process color separations. And we create our separations with a software called Separation Studio, which is available on my website. So if you want to try it, download, download the trial version, go to greatdangraphics.com and do that. And you, uh, you'll be able to use it for 30 days, I believe it is. And... Um, do as many separations as you want. The thing about that software is works awesome and it is what allows us to do what we do for a living. We create cool artwork and we don't have to worry about it printing properly. We know it's going to print properly by this stuff in here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get rid of that. And what I'm going to do here, so we're going to, I showed you the two images that we're going to work with, right? We're going to work with. Um, we are going to work with the full color football and the black and white clip art piece. But before we get to that, I want to kind of show you some functionalities and capabilities that you're going to have with the full color stuff. So, so uh, if we take a look at this one, I'm going to start this way. I'm going to start with this particular image here. So this basketball tiger is, on a black shirt is a five color print. So we printed white base, black, uh, red, gold, blue, and a highlight white, right? So there's no black printed on this black shirt, by the way. That's that's just the full colors uh, that we work with. The black in this image is the black of the shirt. So that's a full color. So I don't know, I know most of you guys that are listening to me, if you're a screen printer, you, you're jumping up for joy and can't wait to print six color shirts, right? Everybody loves six colors. <laughs> that's a total joke and you can't see my face. But I know a screen printer wants to print black ink on a white shirt all day long, all right, because I did it for forever. So, uh, but knowing that, we create full color images. We separate in full color, but you have options available to you, and that's why I wanted to show you this before we get started. So that's our full color version. This particular piece here is uh, three colors. So we use the same exact EPS file, that, and it's a DCS 2.0. Uh, EPS file. And what that means, it stands for Desktop Color Separation uh, 2.0 file. All it is is a separated file. So it's, an out, it's a, um, uh, a one color preview EPS that has our alpha channels built inside of it. And when we go to print, it pulls that information and the data from that one file. So it makes life pretty easy. So what we did in this particular image is we printed our white base. And we flashed it. Then we printed the black. And what I did instead of making a new screen for this purple, because we printed purple ink in here, is we printed the red. So if you go back here and take a look at the red screen, see the red in his mouth, and there's red inside of here and with the orange, and, uh, with the yellows make that orange. So instead of printing uh, red in it, we just put purple ink in the screen, and now we have this tone-on-tone -tone look. So that's black, white, and purple, basically. And we got a tone on tone put because um, you know on a Friday night when it comes to game time in high school spe uh, specifically, uh, those kids want to see that team color in the stands, and this is the easiest way to do it. So we went from a six uh, five color print on that black shirt to three colors in, right there, and then this is the same separations, and all we did was we printed one color. So this, if you notice, the shirt color is showing through here. We call that a soft white. Uh, and basically all we did was we took our white ink and we cut it 50-50 with a soft hand or shape or base or whatever it is that your ink manufacturer calls it. Uh, so we cut it, and that when you cut uh, ink like that, we did 50-50, and it, it makes it transparent, and that's the look we wanted. Again, to get a tone-on-tone -tone style look with very, very easy to print 
um, one color. The cool thing about this image, if you look, you see all the tonality and the detail and stuff. It's all in there because which, if you can do your artwork like this, you separate yourself from the guys down the street. Right? How many of you guys are printing and you, you're fighting for price for the guy down the street? Because when that customer comes to you and says, hey, I want to do a one color, two color, or four color print, right? everybody in the industry seems to automatically go to the clip art piece. Just immediately go to the black and white clip art and then maybe dump a color or two in it depending on how many colors you're going to print. And typically, most customers dictate how many colors they want to print by how much it's going to cost them. Right, well, it's $20 screen charge. Oh, well, then I only want one screen charge. Thank you. So that means a one color print. But if you can print this cool look with one color versus just a black and white or just a one color outline of a, a vector line drawing, you're going to up your game with the art itself, and that's going to keep that customer coming back to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Here's a um, another design. It's one of our stock images. That's, this is a uh, six color print. And it's six colors because we're on a colored shirt, right? So we have to print our white base and our black ink and then all the other colors. So the show, so six colors here, same exact separations. That's the beautiful thing. You don't have to change anything, but you get a cool look by just printing two screens. And that's our white base and our black. Now, this could have been white base with navy blue on a blue shirt to get a tone-on-tone -tone effect. You could have used a baby blue, a really light powder blue, uh, and a navy blue to get a really tonal effect. It's totally up to you, um, the flexibility that you have when you do the, the separations the way we do. And then here you go, one color. So that's a one color print, which is really killer, if you ask me. It's got all the detail in there. It's just our white base. Right, so um, this is, um, you know, you add the type, obviously, but you print one color. That's a one color, one screen charge but it looks so much nicer than your typical black line vector clip art uh, that everybody else is automatically goes to. So when you start doing this, you're going to keep your customers happy. I can promise you that. All right, so definitely wanted to show you that. So now let's go ahead and uh, open up Illustrator. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go to File. And I'm going to go new from template, and I want to show you the templates that we use. So I have an Illustrator t-shirt template that's automatically placed in my templates file. And I just hit new here, and it's going to pull us up, and it's going to show me everything I have, right? So if you want to create your own template, uh, you can, and I absolutely highly recommend you do so, um, because this simplifies the workflow in your shop, right? So we have three points of register. And if you're in register with these three points, your job is in register. You do not need four points of register. And what I mean by that is like if I use the, the uh, registration marks and stuff from the software or from Corel or whatever it might be, we're going to have four registration marks, one in each of the corners, right? Or we'll have a north and south like we have here, and we'll have an east and a west. The problem with that is if your screen guy accidentally burns his screen upside down or exposes it on his exposed unit, in the wrong direction, uh, it, you're going to have an issue. But when you use three points of register, he knows when he lays in on that uh, exposing unit that this dog leg, whether it's up here or down at the bottom, you know, it doesn't make a difference where they are. But he'll know that it goes here. And if he ha if he throws his screen, uh, the film up there, he can say, "Oh, I got it upside down," and then just turn it over. Because, I mean, literally after just a handful of screens they realize that this is positioned in a certain place. Um, this, hap this line here is just a guide rule that is not a printable uh, unit that is just there for preview purposes only. And then you would type in the colors uh, that we're going to use in our image, and we're going to colorize them, and I'm going to show you how we do that uh, right here. Now, this particular, um, whoops, he was supposed to be grouped. Uh, this particular uh, little, little guy here, is he grouped? There we go is floatable. So you don't lock this guy down, you can lock the top one. So if you want to do a left chest, you place it in position here and move this up so you're not wasting a bunch of ink, right? So so now what we're going to do is let's go ahead and open up the black line. We're going to start off with simple uh, graphics first. So I'm just going to hit open. I want to show you this, this template, by the way, because we're going to use that for the full color piece. So I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to screen print webinar. Here we go. Football. I'm going to open this guy up. That's just our 
clip art piece, right? So, and if I preview um, my outline on it, you can see it's just a vector drawing, typical clip art like uh, like everybody else, right? So let's go ahead and look at it in color. So I want to show you this. I when I'm working in Illustrator, and these are just personal things preferences, things that me and my team do, uh, I just want to kind of share those with you because they work really, really well for us and you might find they work for you as well. So I keep my layers open in Illustrator and I keep my swatches open. Uh, and if I turn, twirl this guy down here, you'll see that all these, this whole entire piece is a whole bunch of layers, right? So each little piece, if you notice over here, um, is changing when I turn on and off this preview. So that one little piece is on its own layer, that sort of thing. Now, when it comes to vector stuff, that can get really hairy and scary. It's a lot of information, a lot of things that can happen with it. Uh, so this is what I want to do. If if if, um, if I just click this guy here, right, just select it, and then you notice both pieces, everything is selected on here. If I just make it a color, see what we do? We have um, solid green everywhere except inside of here where, you know, all the open areas. Well, obviously, we don't want to print that, so I'm going to Command-Z or Control-Z that just to go back. And what we need to do is we need to, these are created that way. We'll preview this all work again. We want to be able to select individual bits and pieces. So uh, I'm going to click on it once again. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to ungroup it. Right? So I just ungrouped it. So now I can click on certain elements individually. Right? And I want to do that because uh, if I wanted to colorize just this piece, I can click on the white area. See, it's a so white area. It's actually painted white. And I do that because if we want to just quickly, like just say, for instance, we wanted that pink or blue or green or whatever it is, we can just click on the white and dump a color in it. And when we create our artwork, we create everything with closed paths. Right? This is not designed um, for the offset industry or, or, you know, you get a piece of crappy clip art at the... Uh, you know, on the internet or or somewhere else, they may build this with one big shape and a line here and a line there, and it might look like something, but you can't fill things. Well, we create it so we can fill things. So, for instance, if this was that basketball tiger, and he's got a blue shirt on, but your team is green, you want to be able to just quickly click in that white area and dump a green in it, and that's why we create it th this way. So I'm going to go in here and uh, I'm going to select a black area. Notice it's not all the black areas yet. So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to go to Select Menu. I'm going to come down to Same. So I want to select everything in this image that has the same fill color as the piece that I selected. So I'm going to do that. Right. So now if I take this guy and I make it a compound path, if you notice my, t my layers over here, I'm going to Command Z that. See all these billion little bits and pieces, black pieces? I'm going to go ahead and make it a compound path, right? So now if I come in here and grab the white and I do the select same, it's going to grab all the white fill, the uh, color fill stuff, and I'm do the same thing. So if I go to object, compound path, and I make that, and right now we just have a black and a white, two elements. Turn off my eyeball, and I can do that. So what that allows me to do now is I can click on the white piece and make it a color, right? And there's my black. It's separated now. Or I can click on my black, and I can make it a different color as well. So now, what this also allows me to do, if I want to do a cool two-color piece, right? I'm going to Command Z it. So I can click here um, and make it two colors. So let's do a uh, like a gradient blend. So I click on this. Um, where's my gradient tool here? Here it is. And I want to make it a linear blend, right? I want to go from one side to the other. If I go to linear... Oops, I don't know if you heard that, but that was a phone call that I'm not taking at the moment. Sorry about that. If I go to Linear Blend, um, you can see it It just cre it blends it here. So uh, I can, all these bits and pieces are, are one unit, right? So I can grab one of these parts and move this guy here. So I can change the angle like this. I can change this one to a color. Let's do a red, right? And take this and go to a gold. So we just created a red to yellow blend. Pretty cool looking, especially for this image. So you might want to do that. Here's the problem. If I just use it the way we did, this is going to print out in four colors. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Let's do that. I'm going to go to File Print. And we're going to come in here and we're going to go to, I'm going to choose the right, a different printer. 
of an Epson 4900 and uh, I'm going to do a custom size here so I can see my whole page. And if I go to output, see where it says composite, I want to make sure I go to separations host based. And then here's my uh, the colors. Doesn't show any black because there's no black in my image. So cyan, magenta, yellow. So it will still print though because these these uh, little printer icons are on. So obviously we don't want to print a two color print with four colors. So what we can do is we can do this way. So if I do this, and let's just we chose this particular red here. So if I come in here and I double click this red in my swatches palette, see it says CMYK red. I'm just going to say red color for now. And right here where it says color type, if I make it a spot color and I hit OK, if you notice my little icon changes, I have a little dog-eared corner with a black dot. That means that that color is now a spot color, right? And if I click over here again, let's see here, I want to see which yellow. I can't remember which one of these I chose. Okay, so I chose probably this one. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make this one here. Um, my, I'm just gonna call it gold, so we know it's the different one. Make it a spot color and hit OK, and then that changed my icon. Now it all changed here because I came over here and just made it a spot color. But if I do it, I can always come in here and go back to my blended piece, right? So I'm gonna make it a linear blend. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to click on this. I want to make sure I choose the spot color red. And I'll come over here and double click my gold. And you can see I chose this gold, but I want to make sure I use this one here. And then now when I click off of it, that's a two color blend. So it goes from spot color red to a spot color yellow. Now if I go to file print, and I'm going to do the same thing, Epson 49. I'm going to go to custom, see my whole page, hit output. And I'm going to go to separations. Now look at it. We have gold and we have the red color. So when I print out my films, I'm only going to have two pieces of films. And once you create your artwork in a in a uh, spot color using colors like this, it is already separated. There's no need for us to take it into a separation software or any of that stuff. It is ready to go. Um, your RIP software will account for this graduated blend here, and you assign the halftone screens there. Um, if you have some sort of output device that that uh, you know, that allows it, you can go ahead and type them in here where it says frequency, angle, and dot shape. You've got to make sure you go to separations. So my frequency would be 45. That's the line. My angle would be 61. And then my dot shape, I always use an ellipse dot shape just because it's a much bigger dot and it works better for weaved garments. So that's how you create something with spot colors uh, in Illustrator. I just wanted it super easy. I wanted to show you that. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about our... Uh, full color image. So we're going to come in here and go to football here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this EPS, I want to open it in Photoshop just so you can show it. I'll show you the alpha channels that are built, that's built inside this image. All right, so there's our preview. Here's the problem with Photoshop's previews. They're terrible. Our image will print way nicer than this. This is just the way Adobe previews their alpha channels. They use an digital ink values uh, to build this on-screen preview and that changed when Adobe went from version 4.5 to version uh, 5 and I mean like not CS5 I'm talking about 5 like way back you know 10 12 or more years ago and um, at that time it went the whole preview time went uh, previews themselves went to hell and it just looks terrible so uh, but knowing that you can't basically I wanted to t explain that because you can't go messing with these channels if I go to my channels, and if your channels aren't up, you just go to Window, come down to Channels, and it'll show you. Here's my white base, and if I turn all these eyeballs off, there's my white base. That's the data on my white screen. That's what my white screen is going to look like. There's my black. There's my red. There's the orange. There's my yellow. And then there's my highlight white. All right, so all this data gets printed with those halftones and that line count that I told you about. I just wanted to show you that this in my channels, that's what builds this preview, which is terrible. Remember, it will look great. It'll look like the digital file that you notice on my website. If you look at those uh, prints, um, that's how it would look. So let's go ahead and take that guy into our templates. Let's go to Illustrator. And there it is. So if I go to uh, File menu, come down to Place. I want to make sure I get this guy up. So there's our football. Go to this one. There's our EPS. So when you choose an EPS, and we're going to place it in the Illustrator, and if you're a Corel user, you have to import it, and you have to use that workflow. If I just went File Open, it's not going to work right. 
uh, in here. So um, it, if I click on it, select that image, and here's another one. You have to make sure that this thing is your link is checked on. So it, it is linking this doc, this image, this particular EPS, to my file. So it's checked. It's good to go. I'm going to hit place. But before I do that, what I want you to do is while I do that, watch this screen, uh, the swatches palette over here. I want you to no you'll notice something happen. So I'm going to hit place, and it's reading in my colors there. And look here. See this list, this whole row of spot colors? That's the colors that are used in my file here. So I'm just going to click it in so we can see there's my image. And if I mouse over this guy, there's my number one white base. There's my black. There's my red. There's my orange, yellow, and my highlight white. So the cool thing about Illustrator, and this works in CorelDRAW, and uh, Joe has a class later on today to show you how to do it. Um, is the colors automatically come into your swatches palette. So that's why I always use my standard Illustrator uh, default swatches. I don't have to worry about adding things to it, right? So um, Or loading in spot color, Pantone colors, and then having to scroll through 3,000 Pantone colors. I just use the regular swatches because if I want to print a blue, I can choose the blue I want. It has blues, purples, greens. It has all the colors I need. If I need a specific one, by the way, so let's see, for this image, we're going to have blue type. And I don't see a nice, bright, royal blue in this list. So if you come over here and you double-click the, uh, the color picker, I'm going to choose a blue. And we're going to get something, something like that. See, this color is not really in there. So if I hit OK, I have the blue here. So now if I click and I drag this little square, I drop it over here, see it at the end, it just puts a blue uh, swatch in there. Now, in order for that to be considered and used as a spot color, so for right now, basically, if I'm going to print this guy, I'm going to print it in five colors, or I'm going to print it on a, white, on a black shirt, I'm going to have white, my red, my orange, my yellow, and my highlight white. So that's five colors. If I want to add a sixth color, I can add a blue. If I happen to have a different team color that's not available or something like that. So I'm going to call this blue, and right again, all I have to do is make it a spot color. And then when I hit OK, see my, my eye icons changed in my swatches palette. So there it is. Corel Draw, you choose your custom swat, uh, spot color palettes. So if you want to add a color that's not included in the image that we separate, that's all you have to do. Right? So I'm going to make this a lot smaller here because I want to throw some type on it for us here to show you. So I'm going to push it up. Now remember I told you that this blue line here is not a printable line. It doesn't print. It's just there for preview. So if you think of it this way, this line, if you put your fingers up at the collar of a t-shirt, if, and that's, that's going to move. It'll be raised or lowered um, according to what you like, right? So it's locked down right now, but it, you put it in whatever position. So this is, um, in my world, it was three fingers down from the collar because that's where I like my prints to start. So if you like your prints to start three fingers up, you find out where that is on your palette sizes and your screen sizes and that sort of thing, and you put it there. And you put four fingers, you know, whatever it is distance-wise. That's just nothing... Um, nothing else is going to be above that, right? So we can tape off all that information across the top when we get ready to start printing. So let's go ahead and create some type on this guy real quick. And uh, I'm going to do this. And if you, again, if you saw my other in my other webinars, we use Jackson High uh, for all of the samples, which so is to stay consistent with that. So inside of Illustrator and Photoshop, your tools are here on the left-hand side, and this is the option bar that changes and lets you control the tools that you're playing with. My text is selected, so you can see I have my type information across the top. So right now, my Jackson is here. If I want to scoot it over to the right, I can do it that way. I can center justif justify it or left justify it. I want to do it this way. So we're going to do it like that. Now, if I want to get real picky in here, I can, and this is what I mean by that. If I go to my type, tool here and I click on here. See this gap in between this O and this N? If I, so if I click in there, I can come up here, click on this character link, and I can change the kerning. Watch when I mouse over that sets the kerning. That's the space between two characters. So if I move my uh, little down arrow here, you see it squeezing over a little bit at a time. I find a point that I like and I think that looks good and I leave it. Right? I can click on my J right here and do the same thing. Go to my character palette. Maybe I want more room in there. So I can come in there this I can open them up a little bit more. Now, right here is the um, uh, that's the tracking. So right above is the letting, and the letting is the space between the two letters, uh, two lines rather. So if I want to move it up, 
oops, I got to click. I have my tool selected, so I got to get out of that and just uh, grab my text like this. Now I can do it. Uh, I can move it up or down. See that? So I'm moving it down. I can do this one and move it up and just kind of get the look that I'm looking for. I think that looks alright. Just kind of met up with smidgen. All right. So another thing I want to show you is this. When I twirl this guy down, you can see we're going to take this and convert it to outlines. I'm going to create outlines on this guy. So now, if you notice my layers, if I twirl it down again, each single layer, every layer is its or letter is its own layer. Well, if I start messing with that, adding paths and offsetting paths or because what I want to do is put maybe a white outline and then a yellow outline behind it or something like that or red with a, you know yellows and blues whatever colors I'm going to use three colors in this text basically is what I'm saying but if this gets really complicated so if I come in here while this text is selected and I go to com uh, object and I make it a compound path when I hit make watch those layers over there right I hit make they all go into one unit so they're all kind of basically together as one piece so now when I zoom in, I'm going to view it as an outline here because I want to be able to see what I'm doing. So right now, there's my word or my words. So if I click on that, I can do this. I can see that. Uh, so now what I want to do is I'm going to add an outline to it. All right? So if I go to the, the object menu and I come down to path, and if I offset path here, so if you notice my units of measure right in this minute are set to inches. So if I do a point, uh, 0 0.05, it's going to give me a little small outline here like that, right? So now I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go to Object, come down to Path, and I'm going to uh, offset this path. This time, though, I'm going to do a point 0.1, just make it a little bit different thickness, and you'll see what happens when I do that. See? So we have a three-line or three-outline uh, colors here. So I can get rid it, It's up to you. These are the small things that sometimes can be kind of aggravating. So this little bitty piece, if I select it, delete it twice with a white arrow here, it goes away. Now, let's see this little tip right here. I mean, these are small, small nitpicky things. You don't necessarily have to do it. I could leave that if I wanted, or if I wanted to, I could select it here, go to my pen tool, use my minus or my delete anchor point, and delete that piece. And it got rid of that one thing just so it doesn't uh, cause an issue or preview issue later. So what I'm going to do is just come in here really quick because we're getting close on time and there's some other stuff I wanted to show you uh, with this stuff here. So uh, I'm going to preview it in color for a second, which is no color obviously. Let me select it first. There we go. So we have that selected. So now if I come in and I fill it, I want to fill this type with the red that came in with my image. And you see that's the spot color here. So if I click on the red, and then now I'm going to ch click off of it to show you uh, what it looks like in color there, right? So let's do that. Let's click on that one, and let's grab this one here. And I'm just going to make it white. So if I just want a, a space of a non-printing color, I don't want to put white base unless I want to print it as white. Maybe I want the shirt to show through. So I would just leave it as regular white. And then, or any color that's not printable or non, you know, not, that you don't turn a little printer icon on. So this one here, maybe I want is this gold, right? So I can do that. So now let's take a preview. So we have, if this is a black shirt, which is what we're going we're gonna to print here, this thing on, that's the look that I'm looking for. So right now when I select this guy, it is selected and printed and colorized with a spot color, and you can see that by the top of my screen, that little dog ear with a black dot. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that's going to make this guy come to life here. So really quick, Let's just go ahead and grab a, um, let's draw a little rectangle in here, just to finish out, a, a, you know, make it look like an actual design, maybe, right? And let's go make this, go to the top here, and let's go ahead and uh, preview it in color again. Maybe I want it in gold, so instead of red, I'm going to go gold, and I'll choose this one and do the same thing. Instead of red, let's make it gold. And now, set our type tool here and click on, click in there, caps lock, we can name it Tigers. You can do it any font you want, we can keep it this way, change the font, that kind of thing. Obviously, this is whatever it is that you want to do here. But if it's a black shirt, maybe I just want this in white. Well, if I paint it in white, whoop, if I paint it in white, sorry about that, 
this white here is non-printable. Like that is not a color. That is a computer's version of white. So if I print it and paint it in this white, that's one base white. If I click on that, you can see it's got a slight color to it. Sorry about this. I don't know why in the world everybody wants to call me all of a sudden. I got my phone off. Thought it was off. All right. So uh, it is white. You can see a slight color. That means it will print because there is some color information in here. So this is white ink, not white computer stuff, and there's a big deal behind that. So, all right, so I'm going to zoom in, and I'll explain that in a second here. This is my image. So maybe we want to have this guy come over the words a little bit more, right? Well, here's the problem with an EPS, right? So we got this big white box. It's not going to print, by the way. That is not a printing box. It is just a box. But if I click on this uh, football and I drag it below here to try to get this little piece of football over my type, well, right now it's behind it. So if I go to my object, arrange, I'm going to bring it to the front. Okay, and look what happens. It uses the binding box as my image and not this because in, in a DCS 2.0 EPS file does not recognize transparency. Uh, well, it does recognize transparency. It does not preview it in this way uh, with the transparency. So what I'm going to do is move it back up, and I'm going to show you a way around that. So if you want that football, just the tip of that football to kind of knock out in front of these words, this is what you need to do. So I'm going to come in here and grab my pen tool. And I'm going to fill this right now with none. And I'm going to stroke this with a color that I can see, but not my colors that I'm printing. I'm just going to choose a bright color here so I can see. So I'm going to zoom in. So what I want to do is I want just this tip of this part showing. So if I click in here, I'm going to turn off my caps lock and I can actually see my cursor. So now I'm going to click inside this guy here. And I'm going to come in here and click and I'm going to pull out my Bezier handle because I want to follow along. So what I did there, if I, you know, if I come over here and click, it's going to automatically just keep rolling it. But if I click once on this particular uh, point, my handle goes back inside of itself. So it allows me to change directions and get a more detailed um, outline here. So I'm going to do this and come around a little bit more and kind of shape it to the ball like I'm looking for here, something like that. And then at this point, I'm going to go up a little bit more. So I'm going to click on it again so my handle goes away. See, so the reason I do that is because I can change directions at any point in here. So one more. I'm going to go a little bit higher. There you go. Do it again. Click on there. Change directions. I'm going to zoom out to show you. So all i got to do is get the rest of the image inside of a shape. We're going to make a clipping mask here. And we're going to do like this, right? So I have this on top of my artwork and then now if I hold if I uh, select them both so I clicked on my image now I have my outline here so now if I go to the object menu come down to clipping mask and I make a clipping mask it doesn't look like we did anything but my blue line disappeared right so now if I grab this image and I pull it down watch what happens I can position it just over you know some of that type like I think I want and when I click off of it now I have my football kind of right over my type and I think that looks pretty cool so this is another thing I wanted to show you because we're just about out of time we'll start looking for some questions here in a minute uh, so if this is going to be on a black shirt that's what it'll look like so this is something that's really important and, and Illustrator has this crowd draw doesn't quite have the same thing um, but Joe will go over that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my window menu here, and I'm going to come up and pull up separations preview because this is a pretty slick little uh, trick here. So this is the window that we get when we, when we go to separations preview. So you don't notice anything. All this stuff is grayed out. It doesn't do anything until you click on overprint preview. Right? So that kind of shows us everything that we're going to have here. So if I wanted to I'm gonna turn off my CMYK stuff here just to – just because uh, we're not, we're going to ignore that. We won't even print anything in CMYK. Um, and by the way, I didn't mention this before, but um, this template, everything that's in this template is colorized with registration color. And in Illustrator, if you look at your swatches palette, that's this registration mark looking thing. Anything that's painted in that color will print out on all your pieces of film. So you have one registration mark in grayscale bar painted with that color. Uh, it will come out on every piece of film, so all these individual colors will have it on their on that piece of film. Um, highly important to do it that way. And uh, if you want to know how to make this template, I wrote two books: T-shirt artwork simplified, 
one for Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, the other for Corel Draw and Corel Photo Paint. Uh, they're both available on my website uh, if you wanted to take a look at that. All right, so what I want to show you here, though, is I'm going to turn those off. And if I wanted to look and see, okay, what colors are, do we have selected here? If I turn off and just look at one image at a time, right? So right now my number one white base is here. I can just barely see it because it is a percentage color um, that the separation software will give it. But I can see. So I got my white data. So my tigers is white and this part is white. And now if I look at my black, there's the black data in my image. I'm going to do the same thing with my red. We look at my red. Now I have my red information and I have my red on my words because those two are colorized with the same color. And if you notice my registration marks and whatnot, that's in red as well uh, because it's colorized with registration color. So when I print my films, my red film will have the image and the text together on the same piece of film. So here's my orange. It's just in the data here. And here's my yellow. I have my yellow data and my yellow in my type area. And then this is my highlight white, which is really hard to see because it's you can see some just a little bit something in there. But here's another little trick. If you want to see more data or see uh, a little bit better, if I come over here to my color swatches and I double click um, my white here, watch what happens. So a lot of times I will make my base white light blue, my highlight white light pink. If I do this, if I just come back, give it a color, and I hit OK, see that? I can see the data in it now. And if I do this, watch, watch my white base here. So if I go there, I can still see some data. So it's not very tight or not very good. But if I want to make it a little more blue, it's not going to print blue. Remember, this is just black information on our, on our clear pieces of film. But this allows us to see what's going on. Now, you might want to change them back uh, to the colors that they were. Because watch what happens when I turn on my preview. I mean, it looks really, really ugly because we have a you know, blue, literally a blue, uh, and then a light pink on my highlight. But it, this part doesn't matter. This is strictly for preview purposes so we can see what we have and what color. If I went to File Print right now, and I, here's my my uh, my uh, printer that I'm going to use. I'm going to go to my custom to see my whole entire piece here. My output, I need to change it to separations host-based. And if I come up here, my process black, I don't know why I just unchecked that, but if you look at all my colors here, White base, black, red, orange, Pantone, yellow, and my high, all these have printer icons on them. So if I wanted to print just white or just black or whatever it might be, let's just print just the black, I can do this. Turn all the eyeballs off or printer icons off in front, and it's only going to print that one color. Um, now, one other thing I did not do here, which I want to make sure I mention uh, for you, is this. So if I come in here and I select this, so if I... This is where it says white base. Obviously, on my template it says white base. So whatever colors it is that you are using, I can come in here and I'm going to colorize it with this color, the white color here. My next color is going to be uh, it's going to be black, right? So I can do number two, black, and I'm going to select it, and I'm going to colorize it with the black that came in with my image. Got to remember to use those. So now I'm going to say this is number three, uh, red, whatever red you want, but just make sure you select it and yeah, colorize it in red. And this color here is going to be four. That's going to be orange. And what we're doing is we're just labeling the film. So when it, when we output our films, these colors are going to be on this on that particular color film, so we know what colors it goes on. So I'm going to do five, and we're going to name this gold, right? You can use the ink manufacturer's colors, or you can use whatever else you want. And um, I can come over here and just do this one, or I can add to it. it it's completely up to you. Uh, I don't just make sure you don't go anywhere as close to the this line here, the print of, the uh, the uh, preview line. So now if I go say six, and then say this is a Highlight white. Oops, a little extra H in there. It's my Cajun English for you. I'm gonna come over here, make it that, and then we should be good there. So, if I preview this guy, you see all those nice, pretty colors. Each one's gonna come out on that particular uh, colored film. So, um, that is the screen printing stuff that I can show you uh, on this. So, if you have any questions, I got a couple minutes for questions, uh, but the hard part, the separations that we did, 
uh, those are done for you. Every image we have and we use and we create, we do the separations already. So bring it in, assign colored or lo uh, text or logos or whatever it is that you know you 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 might have to finalize it, make it yours, colorize it with the colors that came in with it, and you're good to go. So while we wait on a couple of questions, because I uh, there believe it or not, there's no questions. I must be awesome. Boy, I knew I was good, but man, I really must be good. <laughs> That's just a joke, people. Just a joke. All right, so there you go. Um, this particular code is going to get you a free month. You can try us out. Go get them. Go see what happens. That month, the first month is on me. After that, it will only be $18.99 uh, per month. Is there a way? All right, so I got a question here. Is there a way to pull a color from the separated image that is not a specific spot color? So uh, the short answer is no, because the colors that we have in this image are all separated already, and they're already spot colors. Um, so I'm not understanding. You know, what I mean, if I were to print a gold or red or whatever, it's going to be on one of those plates. Hope that answered that question. If I had a photograph I could use, or if I wanted to pull this gold out, I could select that specifically. But when we're screen printing, it doesn't really matter. As long as we colorize it, the text yellow with the image yellow, it's, and put whatever yellow gold um, ink in that screen, then we're good to go from that point on. So that, that would work. If I were to print digitally, I could pull this gold out of the image in Photoshop using my eyedropper tool and then I could set the type in that color and print. Okay, so one question is, if you were to do a highlight white over your underbase white on tigers, uh, do you get to print on both screens? Yes. So I would just duplicate it, right? Copy and paste it in place. Oops. And then uh, just go with that. And that would be one color on your base, the other color on your white. Just make sure you overprint them. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get it. So like this here real quick. I'm just going to create outlines and deal with it. But when you um, right now we can see that it's painted with base white, right? So um, if we copy it and we can just you know paste it in front, we can colorize that one with uh, your highlight white color. Um, let me see. Pathfinder, what am I looking for? Attributes. Here we go. If you do this, um, it is going to knock out the white base color because we just duplicated it right on top itself. Whoops. But if you select this uh, highlight white color and then you overprint that fill and use in your attributes there, that is going to print the white base and the white because otherwise whatever's on top is going to automatically knock out. Alright, so to print one color image you always use base white or black layer or pick the layer. Uh, you, you know what, pick the one that you like. Whatever channel you like, use it. It does not have to be the white and the black. The reason I've used the white and the blacks mostly in, in the past is because those colors uh, have more of the detail, right? It just shows more of that image. Uh, but it could be any of the colors you like. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you wanted to print something that's just the color of a jersey, let's say of a guy running or whatever it might be, and print nothing else, he'd be like the invisible man because you only have ink where his uniform or where his clothes wears. That'd be kind of cool, I think. <laughs> so, totally up to you, whatever you want to do. It's just separated. From that point, it's totally, completely customizable. All right, so um, no more questions. So with that, um, we're done. I want to thank you guys for coming. Remember, this code right here is going to give you a free month 
uh, of artwork on me, and uh, we appreciate you guys spending time with me.